in Premier League or Australia's Big Bash. But on Tuesday, the T20 Global League, a competition designed to bring some of the world's best cricketers to the country for a six-week tournament, has been postponed until November next year. Derry Priest explains. The inaugural edition of the T20 Global League was due to start on the 3rd of November, involving eight South African franchises. As well as being a platform for some of South Africa's up-and-coming cricketers to earn a decent paycheck, it was also a chance for them to play alongside some of the world's best players. A.B. de Villiers, Owen Morgan, Faf Duplessis and Kevin Peterson were among the marquee players already signed up for the competition. They now find themselves with a six-week window to fill. In announcing the decision to postpone the tournament until November next year, Cricket South Africa's chief executive, Tabang Moroe, said they had not come to this decision lightly and that they and the tournament stakeholders will regroup and come back stronger and better. Tony Irish, the chief executive of the South African Cricketers Association, said the decision will have a very significant impact on a large number of local and overseas players and that the association will now be looking at what compensation should be paid to them. But for now, at least, it doesn't look like franchise owners are distancing themselves from the tournament. Bloom City Blazers owner Sushil Kumar said in a statement that we remain committed to the T20 Global League, just as we were three months ago. We will be working towards the first edition scheduled for November 2018 with renewed vigour and enthusiasm. But whether that enthusiasm lasts is the burning question. For everyone, it's, it's better to rather not host a really bad event at all, then try and, and push on and, 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 and sort of be hard-headed about it and, and really get embarrassed with no fans and, and no sponsors and no broadcast rights or very little broadcasting. And I think a year is a very, very long time. Um, a, lot of, a lot of owners may say now for the next month or so that you know, we'll, we'll stay behind this and we've invested in this and, and we believe in the product. But now all sorts of people are coming up with leagues, never mind the leagues that are established like the Big Bash League and the IPL. So you suddenly look at it and say, maybe we don't need another one to crowd the schedule because obviously the appetite is not there. If there's no huge broadcast deals on the table and there's no sponsors coming forward and saying we want a piece of the action, I think a lot of owners, and these are serious businessmen, you know, these are multi, multi-millionaires who don't need the hassle of, you know, cap in hand going to a big broadcaster and saying, would you mind please giving us a little piece of your schedule so that we can get some money back on our significant investment. They can take that money and invest somewhere else and, and strengthen their teams that they've already got around the world. For players, I mean, that's all they've been speaking about since the draft in August. It's looking forward to, to, to the T20 Global League. You're building your season around it. And, uh, you know, it's human nature. Once you know that you're supposed to be getting $20,000 or $50,000 or $100,000, you almost, you spent that money in your head. And I, I fully expect players, and, and a lot of players that I've spoken to have already said that Saka is obviously looking at ways of getting compensation, even if it's meeting people halfway, because some people have, have taken this contract and, and sort of turned away other work that they could have played and been free agents. When you think of hosting something massive in Africa, the first sport of call is South Africa. So if you essentially can't organize yourself and, and, and get yourself into a position to have all the capabilities to host a major tournament, whatever sport it is. I think, you know, you, you, you think of the, the Rugby World Cup that's suddenly, you know, being chosen in a couple of months or a couple of weeks even. IRB would, would be well within their rights to, to, to question, you know, how feasible and how easily it could be managed in South Africa. And that's, that's the scary part. You know, we, we're talking about getting back and hosting World Cups again. And this is certainly not a product that's an inferior product in terms of what's on the field. The shenanigans that have gone off the field and the, and the political sort of chess game that's gone on off the field is what's contributed to where we are right now. And, and I think that goes hand in hand with, with, with hosting huge events. And a lot of people will become increasingly twitchy and may, may just say that, you know, South Africa has seen the best of its time in terms of being a hosting nation and you'd rather let them be. Wow, what a show. Well, that's it from me and the team.